Hey, Will, have you seen Malignant? Hey, I have. All right, I want to review Malignant with full spoilers. Full spoilers from the jump. Yes, because I think this is the new starter horror movie. Oh, really? I think this hits the bottom of the barrel to test someone's limits of how much they can take mentally. And I think this hits the highs of insanity on how over the top horror concepts can be. And I think that's a pretty good spectrum to go on. Like you can get into your, your, your deeper, more like artful hereditary midsummer, uh, the witch, uh, the light. Are you know, these like, you, all a 24 movies that you just, <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you can get into these things sort of like later if you want, but, but I think Malignant is like a really good test for like, oh, if you think you're going to like horror, try this. See if this shuts you off. Hmm. I kind of thought of it almost as an opposite to that, as a bridge no. between someone who's a fan of mainstream horror movies to dip their toes into seeing a whether or not they would like a bad B movie horror movie. Because this is both this is yeah. this is kind of both of those things similar to what you described of running the gamut between both of those ends of the spectrum this is also kind of a big budget hollywood horror movie directed by james wan yeah and also a it feels like a movie you would find at big lots for two dollars which we which, have done before <laughs> according to jay on red letter media is one of the quotes from James Wan that was the point. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to jump into, this is our first, the first movie, direct movie review I think we're going to have done. And what I really want is for us to just kind of like share our, our instinctual reactions and then compare ours to what comes out online. Because I like the idea of being vulnerable about like, I was dumb and didn't think about this. Mm -hmm. Like, sure. um, and I, I could think that's more okay than people allow people to be. So for now, I'll hold off and only say that. I want to know more about what you thought. And I'll tell you what I thought, because I've now watched it twice. Oh, gosh. I have not watched it twice. <laughs> um, so the, the movie Saving Grace, I think, is being available on HBO Max. First, first and foremost. Um, rather than me having to go to the theater to see it. Had I paid money to see this movie, I probably would have liked it less, to, to be perfectly honest. But, but, uh, I, I'll, I'll rein in some spoilers first and then just say, at least what was happening in this movie is different. At least the premise of this movie is different enough from mainstream horror movies where somebody gets possessed or they, they have to blow up a house, or it's it's a POV, like, zombie movie. At least it's not those things. Yeah. And I can say at least it was different enough. And also the premise in the trailer of, like, her having visions of the murders, that's cool. I mean, that's been in stuff before, but at least it's, it's, it's interesting enough. Okay, yeah. so... The trailer made it look less original than it is. Yes, correct. Now, basket case notwithstanding. Yeah. Um, well, basket case, and I, I, I got a. It's a mini rant that I think I've gone on and on a podcast. This film not rated, found on Apple Music Podcast, Spotify, and Red Circle. I think uh, if you, <laughs> I'll go on that in a minute though. But mm -hmm. but basket case notwithstanding, what? That's the only other movie I can think of with this premise, um, which is. Spoiler, uh, former conjoined twin in the back of your head yeah, who is controlling your body because your abusive husband broke your skull open, yep. which I've never seen in a movie. <laughs> but the, the important thing of what this movie is and being different is not the fact that it's a conjoined twin taking over her body. Yeah. It is the fact that when the conjoined twin is in control of her body, are you ready for this? You, 
viewer at home or wherever you are are you ready for this probably because this is a much later review than everyone else's well yeah probably <laughs> it is in control of her body but it moves backwards because the thing's face is on the back of her head sometimes sometimes there is a chase where it hasn't been fully revealed what's going on and the killer rounds a corner like this and you're like did i did what i a, see that right what a goofball <laughs> yeah i was like what what was that well no the first sign that i saw in the movie takes place just a little bit before that and it's when we have the reveal of of the killer getting ready to stab the old man in bed the the legs are backwards and so yeah yeah it's like, and like the stabbing looks kind of weird it's like <laughs> right yeah but, so yes, there's there's little little peaks of like oh this person is backwards, but but I think that a lot along with a lot of this movie is intentional. I think they flip flopped how they were recording the, the person killing? moving so oh. that it would seem dis like hard to discern. Right, which but, I mean that's that's like the psychology behind camouflage, for example, is not to hide you, but to make your outline hard to yeah to, and indistinct yeah. So, but was the movie good? Absolutely. Uh, I As, liked it. I love it. I, I did like it. I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I, I didn't love it, but I liked it. Okay. So here's my thing. I saw it in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh -huh. We had a blast in the theater because it only takes one person in an extremely uncomfortable audience to laugh mm -hmm. for you to start to understand you're supposed to be laughing at parts and it, it, it clicks away from it because they sold it on the back of James Wan's reputation since the conjuring, you know, people don't really think about him and saw anymore, but right. since the conjuring, James Wan has been the insidious conjuring guy who was like, what the hell? He's making Aquaman now. And he made a Fast and Furious movie. So, which is hilarious because the direction of action is so Aquaman. It's not even funny. <laughs> like it was insane. But, um. Didn't see Aquaman. So, all this stuff that I'm guaranteeing when you're watching at home, you're thinking about in the back of your head in that way that you're like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> you, you have a reason for one or two people to be like, <laughs> what like right well there's I, it's funny you mentioned that i'm gonna go on a quick anecdote tangent friday the 13th 2009 where it was as you described malignant was friday the 13th 2009 was a laugh riot in the theater place was packed the like i i think it was i don't know if you i know you've seen friday the 13th 2009 i don't know yeah. if you at home or wherever you are has seen Friday the 13th, 2009. It's hilarious. It's uh, hilarious. It's awful, but it's hilarious. Especially because, and this is the breaking point for the audience, especially because the title card doesn't come up for like 15 minutes. 20 plus minutes. 20 plus minutes. Yeah, watching it on streaming. Uh, yeah. And the whole theater burst out laughing at that point. <laughs> and so the rest of the movie was ruined if the intention was to horrify it. So I get what you're saying. So I did but, watch it with whoa, a handful whoa, whoa. of people. Hang on. Friday the 13th, 2009 still sucks. Yes. Unintentionally funny. Like, but what you're yeah. saying is there, there are intentionally humorous moments in malignant. It's unintentionally humorous. It's bad, but it's a rare case where someone tried to make something transparently bad. And it still is funny. Mm -hmm. It's like someone trying to make a joke that lands, but it's about the balance between what you're supposed to be scared of and breaking that tension with something absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like a moment th that really, I think, clears it up is their equivalent of the calls are coming from inside the house. Yeah. You know, when that lady falls through the ceiling. Oh my gosh. Like, and it's not until after that that you put together that that means the top of her house has an industrial sized fan mm -hmm. on yep. the front of it. Yep, you sure do.
And, and they knew that you can't not intentionally make that. So it's kind of where it crosses a line to where someone is like almost making a spoof movie, but taking the horror elements seriously. But it's really, it's, it's not quite that. It's just more of a genuine, like somebody being unashamedly a talented director, having no shame about the fact that they love shitty horror movies. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Would you recommend people see Malignant? Okay. If you are the popcorn munching everyday theater goer who just goes to the movies to go to the movies, mate, if, if you're an enthusiast of horror movies, yes. If you're an enthusiast of comedies, yes. If you, <laughs> you want to see a movie with a premise that is more or less original, especially in its execution of the killer, then yes. I did the, the friends I watched it with, one was stoned and he was like, huh. uh, another one was at the end, like looked at me and was like, I hated that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I had a good time. Um, sorry, like, you didn't enjoy movie. your time. <laughs> yeah, he was like, that was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> it, it it depends on what you're what you're expecting. And I do think that. If you're going to see Malignant, you need to know ahead of time that it's not going to be quite what you expected. Kind of like enjoying The Last Jedi. You see, it's hard because I I agree with you and I don't in the sense that I feel like not knowing what's going to come is the gamble that makes it interesting. Oh, I don't mean knowing what's to come. I just mean knowing, hey. I think expecting it to be something like Insidious. And then it's more like, uh, makes you have to go on a Roger ride Abbott. yeah <laughs> yeah it makes you have to go on a ride that i think is just like what am i supposed to feel and then, they killed every single person in that police station how <laughs> not one cop was like all right everybody get to the edge of the room and just point your guns at it okay <laughs> <laughs> try, like, not to, try everybody not to everybody step back place. don't get hit by a chair the is she is, fine, by the way? The one uh, she got hit with a chair and then she's out of commission. Whatever, man. I don't know. All <laughs> I, I know I know that it has superhuman strength and they didn't care to explain that. I know that it can speak through radios and they didn't care to explain that. I know that it can get angry and surge and bust electrical equipment and they didn't care to explain that. But they don't have to care to explain it. Like right. I, I agree. I don't want an eight movie franchise for Gabriel. But he, uh, well, here's the little, the little rant that I was going to go on. <laughs> the movie opens in what basically looks like the house on Haunted Hill. Mm-hmm. While you watch a tiny screen cap of uh, like a little a thing of like, oh my gosh, it's like an early 2000s sort of uh, vibe of let's cut out the cancer. There's a mm-hmm. horrible operation gone wrong. Like I literally recently, unfortunately, rewatched the House of Wax remake. Mm, yes. which this this makes me think a lot of those like dark castle like uh house on haunted oh, wow. hill like remakes and things like that but the you know it's like a doctor and drama and craziness and all this kind of stuff and and, and you meet the character and you start seeing things and there's like all these little visual cues and references to different movies like the girl being up against the door hoping that her boyfriend doesn't come back like the shining like mm. Uh, the upstairs attic that they're in is such a reference to Black Christmas and to so many like other like older horror movies. There is a shot, I was wrong in saying this before, that is locked and like scans the top roof of the building like while she's running away upstairs in her house. Hmm. And this... Oh yeah, that was a cool shot. I like that. Like, I don't know that all this stuff are references, but they do that in the original Evil Dead. And they do that again in Don't Breathe that just came out recently. And then when you go back to look at old video footage, there's a lot of reminders of the ring and paranormal activity with the girl on the phone. And then you have the color tones of Insidious with like the red invading things out of nowhere that has no source. And it it goes from supernatural into this. And and then like the whole time, there's even like a couple movies that I I didn't think of the first time that I saw it. I was like, yeah, no, this is that. Like the whole movie is like 
the saw police vibes, like a police procedural trying to find a killer before they do a thing. Like you said, uh, the bleeding into seeing something in a different room, like witnessing the killing, like before it happens kind of thing. I don't remember exactly what that's from, but it's like they made something new using components from the history of horror. Right. And well, you you know that, and you'll be conscious of that when you watch it, but the average moviegoer may not be aware of that. No, but that's why they're going to get a really neat platter of nice. artistry from all across horror when you watch it. So the problem is the dialogue is so fucking awful. Like, Yeah, it's it, pretty bad. It, it, that also is intentional, but it doesn't make anything clench less hard when I'm having to listen to people talk and like, it's been my body too. I know. And next time I'll be ready for you. Like, stop it. Like, and I she, know. she imprisons him in the same cell where they kept Magneto and X-Men one and two. Oh, uh, Brian De Palma. Cause this gets into a little bit of what other people were saying about the movie, which is the second half of what our movie reviews are going to look like. Uh, even if like, I'm just doing the movie review is going to be, how everyone else reacted to malignant with our rating being whether or not we match up with people. So you can either trust us or not. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, how high Don't. is this? <laughs> like that's the rating is elbow on, on by my side, elbow in front of me. Like I'm hiding a secret elbow in front of my face or like buried. The shadow. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, uh, everyone talks about giallo, Italian giallo films. Sure, yeah. The staple of those being, you know, black love killer, mystery killer, unique sort of murder weapon, misdirects in in who and what and where is the killer and how they're going to attack somebody, heightened campy levels of, you know, gore and all this kind of stuff. And, and that is all over this movie. And I didn't think about that before. But, Another person who's influenced, I think, heavily by that is Brian De Palma. Mm -hmm. And some of his movies, uh, like Dress to Kill and Sisters, have this element. And this was a big deal to me, where the movie pauses to give you an exposition dump explaining their killer. Mm. They're like, okay, so here's what's going on. <laughs> Transgender people are not crazy, but this person is crazy. So this person has confused da 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 da. da. So you think there's a blonde woman killer, but actually it's a man. And you're learning all this on like a video or, or an audio recording from a psychiatrist right. that worked with the guy. In Sisters, you learn about a conjoined twin that was excised and is angry about being cut off from her sister. And. <laughs> <laughs> you literally see a video recording of a scientist explaining this is a rare condition. As you can see, the twin is blah, 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 blah. And it does a thing. It's a something I heavily associate with Brian De Palma, which for more mainstream audiences, he directed the first Mission Impossible. He directed Scarface. Um, and Carlito's Way. Carlito's Way. And so there's, there's like... <laughs> heavy influences in this movie from stuff but it is nonetheless original right so suck it 10 years ago shia labeouf did what malignant has a 76 percent fresh tomato meter and 52 percent spilled popcorn bucket audience meter thanks but, for throwing in the popcorn bucket <laughs> yeah so but here's the thing the average review is a 6.4 out of 10. Mm -hmm. The average review is a 33.1 out of 5. So it's actually higher than 50% from the audience and about 64% from critics. So I think everyone is pretty much like, I think there's so many people, and this happens so much with horror. Horror fans really like it, and those are the people who are going to want to watch it. A large mass of your average moviegoers, if they're not into horror, they're not going to review it. But then the ones that do because it's just their job or whatever, who don't like horror or, you know, like are looking for a movie to not just intentionally be dumb at parts, like 
they're going to rate it really low. And so what you'll find is you really can't trust a lot of reviews online for horror. What other people are saying Love it or hate it, there isn't much in between. Malignant is a horror movie that takes risks and is willing to get weird. That is true. That, I agree with that. That is a fact. Although, and then critics consensus. Although Malignant isn't particularly scary, director Uh James Wan's return to horror contains plenty of gory thrills and a memorably bonkers twist. Also true. Ah! I don't think it's just a bonkers twist. There's twists and turns all through the thing. No, all right, hang on. It's not the twist in and of itself that's bonkers. It is the scene in the jail, like the police holding the pl- the tank, that is yeah. bonkers. Like yeah. when they reveal it, like the twist itself is like, oh no, a conjoined twin that's been controlling her body. It is the fact that she murders all of these archetypal women prisoners Dude, in jail. What was with the prisoners in jail? <laughs> One of them is from the 70s. One of them is from the 80s. One of them who stepped out of the disco into a 2020s jail. Uh, Another one played by Zoe Bell. Yeah. Zoe Bell. The the, famous stunt woman who does nothing in this movie. Except except cause everyone but herself to get murdered first. Which I thought was hilarious. That is funny. But why were they all like... I Again... So when it says memorably bonkers twist, that scene is memorably bonkers. Yeah, see, I think we're past the point where everyone's going to be like, it was a conjoined twin on her the back of her head. And I, I'm waiting on someone to be like, you mean like Voldemort from Harry Potter? Yeah, like, right. I'm like... You mean like... You mean like Tom Green's backwards man? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, no. Also, you, to go back a little bit, when you mentioned that opening scene, cut out the kensu. Yeah. Um, the guy, they, they're going down the hallway, the doctor and the other doctor, whose name I could not tell you, who would have been played by Glenn Shadix if Glenn Shadix were still alive. Um, Otho from Beetlejuice. Mm-hmm. They're, they're coming down the hallway and they're talking to each other and there's like alarm bells going off in a hospital um like a red alert in a hospital it's a house on haunted hill hospital it's ridiculous and so they get to the room and somebody gets thrown out of the hospital room and the timing is comedic like it it is timed so well for a comedy but at no point do they make they present it as a comedy it's just that comedic timing is just there the moment that made our audience crack um, was surprisingly late in the movie. Um, it should have been much earlier. I feel like if you're not laughing by the time a police officer tries to do the thing where he jumps off a fire escape into a dumpster, but the dumpster's closed. And he, he just comes. <laughs> um, It was when the stepsister or adopted sister dr- almost drives off a cliff. Park. She parks. She parks like okay. There's a cliff. It, it's it's here, right? She parks here, and it's like, why? Where's the parking lot for this abandoned mental hospital? <laughs> oh my gosh! <It's... laughs> the only thing that was missing from the establishing shot of that hospital, by the way, I'm because I don't think they did this, was clouds and lightning and thunder, like of like. <laughs> Like, I, I like to imagine that on set, like I'm like a script supervisor and I'm like, um, we're going a little campy. Shouldn't there be like a thunderstorm? Like it's a dark and stormy night kind of thing going on. And James Wan's like, no, that'd be cliche. And he's just like, <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I can't imagine how many of those conversations happened in the production <laughs> of that movie. Um, do oh, the, what? Yeah, M- malignant isn't particularly scary. The critics also say, not after a certain point, but the first time you watch it, and a little bit the second time I watched it, it was still kind of like this this story disoriented. There's always something I think a little bit unnerving to people if you can attach it to something that can really happen to you. And mm-hmm. I think when she's first discovering what's happening, the idea of sleep paralysis. 
Yeah. Like you're locked into something you don't want to experience and there's a shadow figure near you. I think there's something relatable to that. And I just think he's just so genuinely talented as a director, James Wan, at like fleshing out and framing things. Like, I, you know, I, I well, think there is some scary in the beginning. But yeah. There is some, but I, would, I wouldn't call it what, what was what does it say uh bu, 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 bu. isn't particularly scary i would agree with that fundamentally because there are scenes that are scary but that's that's like saying the fellowship of the ring is scary because of the scenes with the ring rates um the rest of the movie is an action adventure for all ages and i'm not saying malignant is by no means is it an action adventure for all ages but like the scene underground in the old subway tunnels or whatever um the tour guide gets abducted that was scary like the lights going off and all that stuff that was well done Mm -hmm. but yeah after that point mm, predictability in this movie is weird (laughs) because on the one hand there's this guy I, i was reading through these pretty much everyone who gives it a positive like tomato are the people who uh are just saying like you know, not looking at a very surface level like it's creepy it's scary it's like okay no it's not but all right what, i don't know what you're doing um there's no way to watch this deranged follow-up and not conclude that juan is back where he belongs i'm like um which is where <laughs> yeah because this isn't really like uh if you think this, if you think this is just horror and like all horrors like this like you might might have missed some of the point well like and that's just my opinion but um there's there is there's this one malignant is the type of movie that requires viewers to strap in and shut up from the onset. Oh like, no, absolutely no, not. Like I'm we were yucking it up the whole time. Fairly certain, yeah. Now here's someone who brings up Giallo. Malignant isn't a good movie, but the bones of its Giallo salute are just outlandish enough to make one wonder if the obtuse moments are purposeful. So this guy's like, I rated it negatively, but I'm wondering if this was on purpose. Yeah. And everyone else who rates it negatively across like it, it's people are saying, Oh, it's slick and stylish, but there's just nothing below the surface or like everyone is kind of missing the idea, Like you can't acknowledge that something is pulpy and based on something that was very surface level entertainment and go, but there's just nothing more than surface level level entertainment. And like, that's your main criticism. Like, are you hoping one day someone's going to come in and make all of this wacky campy surface level entertainment stuff? Like, really deep and impactful and new and unfound. Like, I don't, I don't, I think the people who are rating this negatively had an expectation and everyone reviewing it positively had no expectations. 